everyone, my name is Julie Sabo and I am an animator and illustrator working with the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art for Art Card Extra this summer. We are going to create a project based on the paintings of Gladys Nielsen. And Gladys Nielsen is a watercolor artist and he's known for making really large, playful watercolor paintings. Um, they feature bright colors and you know, strong lines, imaginative spaces, and exaggerated characters. So kind of think like cute cartoony. Um, when you are looking at her paintings, just kind of look for her So look for these things when you are looking at her paintings. This project will help will, this project will give you guys a chance to experiment and paint with watercolors, just like Gladys Nielsen. So in your kit, you should have received a piece of watercolor paper, watercolors, and yours are going to look different than mine, so don't worry if they don't look like this, um, and a paintbrush. And when you're making this project, I really want you guys to experiment and have fun. Um, you are, and experiment and have fun and, you know, create your own characters in your own world. I want you to try playing with scale, which is how big or how small something is, and colors and just, you know, painting in general. Um, I really want you to think about the character's point of view and what kind of world they might live in. So yeah, um, have fun and let's go get started. First, I want you to use a pencil or you can lightly paint with yellow, paint with your yellow watercolors, and draw two or three very large humans, animals, or monsters on the paper. I am starting with these weird little creatures that I made up, and I have just very lightly sketched everything out, and once I have settled on my composition, which is how I, where I want everything in the painting to be, I start painting. After you have your main characters, add some background elements to the painting with your pencil or paint. And I really want you to try and fill up the whole page. Think about what kind of place your characters live in. Are they giants? How do they interact? And how do they interact with the world? So for my painting, I have my little monster guys that are I decided are underwater creatures and then I added a bird poking his head into the water and they're just kind of looking at each other and trying to figure each other out. And then I also added a like, kelp forest and another little forest of little broccoli trees and some rocks. Third, I want you guys to paint and watercolor paint needs to be wet in order to work. So dip your brush into the water and use the brush to wet whichever color you want to use first. Before you switch to a new color, make sure you clean off the brush first. You can see here that I, I use a couple different techniques. I get the paper wet first and then also add water to my paint and dip the, and you know, put the paint in the water on the paper. You can experiment with how much water you add and how much water you, you can experiment with using less water to make the colors richer or more water to make them lighter. And you can see I'm just kind of things up. I might start really light and then maybe work darker. Another fun thing you can do is get salt. And you'll see where I made my little broccoli trees. I scattered some salt on top of them. And then you need to wait for the painting to completely dry before you add this to them. I also have a sponge. And if you have a sponge at home, make sure it's clean and dry. But you can add texture to your paintings by either dipping your sponge into the paint or, or putting the paint on the paper and sponging it up. Go to... Uh, Momoka's or the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art, um, their website, and you'll find more activities, uh, and go visit, you can visit Gladys Nelson's paintings on their website, uh, virtually, and, you know, have fun. Don't be afraid to experiment and make mistakes. That's what they're, is about. Okay, bye!